Uh, I just want to start with um, how sorry that um, our staff and the Oklahoma State family and our team is uh, about the incident earlier today. Uh, I, I don't know a lot of details. Um, at, at one time, there was some discussion because of the impact um, of the families and the people that um, whether to play the game or not, and those decisions are made kind of higher than me. And uh, uh, I was willing to support whatever direction they wanted to go. So I don't really think that that's something that's up uh, for discussion at this point. But it was really difficult um, for our coaching staff, our team, uh, myself, uh, being an Oklahoma State alum, and uh, what we uh, and I think other people across the country consider um, the greatest homecoming uh, in college football. And uh, it's a very unfortunate situation. And so our thoughts uh, and prayers from all of us go out to the families. Uh, but I do want to reiterate that uh, this one incident can't take away from Oklahoma State University, cannot take away from the homecoming and the celebration. And um, uh, that's something that's very important to us and to me uh, to make a, the point that um, it, it is a great time of the year, it's a great weekend, and it's a great day. There's a tremendous amount of pride and effort that go into our homecoming, and that's why it's been established the way it is. And uh, I, I don't want anything to be taken away from that. Um, in the game, uh, I thought our team played well. Uh, when we got ahead at one point, 35 to three, or I'm not for sure what score was, about 30 points. I thought we kind of settled down a little bit defensively, got lack of days ago, we missed some tackles. Offensively, we didn't, we weren't very productive. Um, we got the guys in at halftime. We, we had that discussion and uh, we, we told them we needed to get them back out there. We needed to play well in the first um, six or seven minutes of the second half and take control of the game, establish ourselves and give some of the younger players and, and other players that have walked on uh, that are great contributors to our program, give them an opportunity to play. So that's the way it worked out. I thought that our defensive plan was really good. As I, as I mentioned, we did miss a couple tackles and, and uh, allowed them to get the ball down the field a time or two. Um, offensively, we rushed the ball a little bit better. Um, we still have a long ways to go running the football. We're going to continue to work at it. Uh, I thought the quarterback made good decisions. He missed a couple throws. thought we caught the ball well. Um, so overall, it was a, a good win for us. And um, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, but we're looking forward to getting the guys back tomorrow and moving forward. Mike, at what point this morning did you hear about the news? Where were you and, and kind of what was the situation? Well, I was at the uh, Atherton. We were in, in meetings and in our normal pregame preparation. and. You guys know information is instant now. Uh, everybody has a phone, and so uh, I don't I don't know what time an incident happened, but I'm going to guess that uh, we found out about it pretty quick, just because everybody has a phone. Can you talk about some of the factors that went into the decision to, to play? Uh, you know, in terms of what you what you considered, what you weighed, what uh, what fell on the side of maybe we should cancel it. I'm going to guess a little bit here. Uh, I, I did not get involved in those conversations, but um, our administration, uh, the president, the board of regents, I would say had a discussion and they made that decision. Um, and we and I and all of us have to trust that they're going to do what they think is best for all, all parties involved in a no-win situation. That's one of those decisions that how do you really win? Um, so I did not get in on that discussion. Mike, what were the discussions you had with your players beforehand, you know, when they get news like that to keep them focused on, on a game when it maybe seems insignificant? Told them the truth. And uh, that's the way we handle situations in our group. Um, good news, bad news, any news at all. And there's really no comparison to a tragic incident like what happened this morning. But we tell them the truth uh, in our, in our pregame uh, conversation before we come to the stadium that um, part of – the development of young people in, in our organization is that there are things in life that we can control and there are things that we can't. And that's a, an incident that there's not anything we could do about it. And there was certainly not anything that we could do if we were going to play the game. And so um, our players understand that. And um, my message to them was a decision has been made to play the game. So 
we need to play the game. And after that, we need to do everything we can to help the families and the people involved. Mike, how proud were you of how the pl the players uh, sort of sort of business like effort out there today under the sure. adverse conditions? Um, one one of the first things that I said is is that we appreciate the uh, maturity and the um, focus of our players. It's not easy, uh, and and uh, uh, we we've had some um, tough situations here at Oklahoma State. Uh, and so this one was as difficult as, as any we've had because when it gets to a certain point, how is one any worse than the other? And they focused and went out and played, and um, that's all we can ask them to do. Did it take you back to 2011 at all? Unfortunately, you kind of have experience. You know, I think that um, you, we think about a lot of things, and um, – <laughs> You know, I didn't want to get into a, a lot about this because there's not really anything to say, but um, we we're in football meetings. When I found out about it, the first thing you do is you go call and find out where your family is. Football all of a sudden doesn't become very important. That's a personal opinion. And um, so, um, you know, I mean, that's, that's what you do. You know, you're talking defense, you're talking offense, you're talking special teams. Um, from our standpoint, we need to play well. We need to continue to improve. We need to get better. Uh, we need to win the football game. But when you hear of an incident like that, football's a non-factor. Uh, you start calling and finding out where your family is and your kids and other people, and you just hope that um, it's not as bad as what people think. You know, and, and the more you say, you just kind of set yourself up because there are no words that can um, even express a situation like this. There's just nothing you can say. I mean, it's, it, it, it just has to be the absolute worst thing that can happen to uh, a family and loved ones. What have you learned? Uh, Excuse me? What have you, and this is your second time to play uh, directly after a tragedy. Mm -hmm. What have you learned about the way young people process that type of information quickly, especially in an environment like college football where your performance is so much is sure. First thing is, is I'm responsible for them. And uh, it's my job to stress to them the importance of how we should feel about an incident that happened. But there's certain things in life that we can control, and nobody in that room, coaches or players, would have wanted that to happen. Can't do anything about it until the game's over. We can support now. But prior to that, if we we're going to play the game, they need to play the game. And that's really what I've learned. I don't know that I was as good at Iowa State. Um, and maybe I wasn't today, but you asked me what I learned. I'm telling you what I learned. It was very touching for everybody to see the team come together before the game, huddle up and take a knee, and you kind of stepped in there and led them. What was the decision process about that, and was that helpful for the kids, you think? Um, you know, I'm not very good at stuff like that because um, – my focus is always on certain areas, and um, uh, President Hargis suggested that we um, show support, which we want to, but um, I, you guys have to realize, you know, at what point and where do you do it and how do you do it, and, and you don't just throw things together when you're talking about 124 players and a staff of about 40 administrators, and so they suggested that um, – that we would 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 do that on the field. I thought that was a great idea, um, and we um, say the Lord's Prayer as a group all the time, and that was the time to do it for the victims, and we were able to do it and function and not slow the game down uh, and offer some support to the people involved prior to the game. Coach Beatty went to, to Twitter and voiced his support to the community before the game. Did he have any words – with you before the game? Who was that? Coach Beatty. The, the Coach Beatty? Um, yes, that was the first thing he said. And uh, he's a class individual, and, um, I mean, he feels the same way. Uh, just like if it would have happened at Kansas, I'd feel the same way that he did. And so everybody is concerned, uh, but it's just you, you're helpless. We feel helpless. And so all we can do now is, is offer support to the people that were tragically involved. Anytime there's a tragedy in Oklahoma, the state gets thrown into a national spotlight, mm -hmm. and the media talks about the Oklahoma standard. Governor sure. Fallon talked about it at halftime today. Do you have a definition of the Oklahoma standard? 
Well, you have um, salt of the earth, uh, blue collar people uh, that understand family and they take care of each other. And so that's uh, our background. I'm proud of that. That's my background. That's our family background. And so that's, uh, that's an advantage for us. Uh, strong people, they understand things and rallying around as a group and try to make it better. Regarding the game, can you talk about J.W. and just what he was able to put together? Well, Jay came in, and um, I think he was five for five throwing, right? And um, he may I mean they throw a touchdown pass. I think he did, right? Two. Yep. And um, he's continues to make plays for us. And I mentioned to you guys preseason, during the season, and each week that we need to continue to um, – involve him in our offense because he's a good football player and he makes plays. And um, Mason was Mason was good today. As I mentioned, 20 of 26 for 300 and something. Uh, and he also avoided the rush well today. A couple times we, we weren't as good um, on some line stunts as they were uh, as we would have wanted to be in protection. I thought he did a nice job of that. And then JW can come in and execute. And we're very fortunate that we have two players that can compete at a high level and help us win football games. Mike, what would you say was the most promising aspect of run game improvement that you saw without watching film yet that you, you know you can take from this game and say kind of move that forward and help you guys out? You know, I I would be um, mistaken to tell you right now because they moved a lot, Kyle. And so I have to watch it on tape. I can't tell from the side. And so I can give you a better idea Monday of, of where it was at. I thought there were some improvements, but we still have a long ways to go. And I need to watch tape to be able to give you guys a, a fair assessment of what happened during the game. Did you feel like you were making some improvements in the two weeks, Mike, the right game? Sure. Yeah. We, we have. We've improved some. But you remember what I said now. It's not going to all of a sudden – we're not going to just show up and look like a running team that knocks everybody off their feet. We have to get a little better each practice, a little better each drill, a little better each day, and a little better each game. Okay? And we know that. We're very aware of that. Um, but we also um, uh, want to congratulate the team and the players for winning. Um, so I'm somewhat hesitant to say – got to get better, got to get better, got to get better, because when you win, uh, they put in a lot of work. They need to be rewarded. We know that as coaches. They understand that. There was some improvement, and we need to get better Sunday night, then Tuesday, and then Wednesday, and just keep progressing as the season moves forward. Jesse Robinson was in there right guard today. Is that something that developed over the two weeks? or Paul um, had uh, – kind of a bum knee for a few days, and he's a little bit sore. Jesse got most of the work, but Paul should be full speed on Sunday. We, it, we did not make a position change. Um, we didn't feel like that he had got enough work um, to put him out there in the game today. Good? Okay, guys, thanks.